Okay, so a number of people have asked me how to uh, do water spray effects for animations. So I'm going to run you through that at this point. Um, so I'm going to take a UFO model, which I did in another video. If you want to know how to do the glass effects or the other shaders, um, check out the videos on the rest of my channel. Um, but I'll just show you what I've got going on here so that you get a sense of the setup. I've got this UFO model. Glass is separate. Um, and then there's a plane on the bottom which basically has a shader attached. Um, the shader is very simple. It basically takes a noise texture um, which is scaled in the y axis so that it sort of elongates. That's one through a color ramp which gives. Uh, this effect where I've got the blue ocean, the white sort of um, water speed lines. Uh, and then I'm running that into a tin shader, but um, any shader that sort of like basically flattens the color would work. Uh, and then in, in order to animate the water effect, I've basically set this Y here. Let me show you some little trick. Um, so if I set this to frame, uh, the wide movement of this noise texture um, is set to the frame number. And so as I play the animation, let's try that again. There we go. Uh, it works at the frame number and it plays the animation. Okay. Uh, so the other aspect of this animation is essentially I've taken my UFO object. It's not actually moving um, within the space. Essentially, uh, it's moving up and down, and it's using that water effect, the water animation, to give the indication of movement. Um, in order to actually animate the UFO and sort of give a sense of its movement, all I've done is I've applied a noise modifier uh, to the Y and Z locations of this object just so it moves up and down a bit and I've also applied a rotation to the UFO. Uh, so that gives me this basic animation. So now what I want to do is going to lay out and I want to create the water spray effect. So the way I'm going to do that is very easy. First of all, I need two elements. One is an emitter, um, which is going to create the particles, and the second is the particle object. Uh, so I'm going to create the particle object first. I'm going to go Shift A. I'm going to add in an icosphere. This doesn't have to be a very complex object, and I'm basically going to scale it in um, the y dimension. I'm going to scale it in the x dimension. And then I'm just going to apply smooth faces to that. And that gives us the basic object. Uh, now, one thing I want to do to this is apply a modifier, which is going to be uh, a distort. If I can find it. Sorry, it's the place displace modifier. Um, so the way that the displace modifier works is um, it's going to use a cloud to basically apply distortion to this object's shape. This means that um, every time we emit this particle, it has a slightly different shape. Uh, now the key thing here is that we want to change these coordinates from local to global. Now, as I grab this object, it moves slightly and you can see its shapes distorts. So you can change the strength of this distortion. And now we've got this effect. Now what I'm gonna do is just to make it a bit smoother, I'm gonna apply a subdivision surface. I only need one level here now. 
we get this strange texture. It's really good for making the rocks and things like that. So that icosphere object, which I'm going to name, it's going to be called spray. And I just want to hide that somewhere. So I'm going to put it underneath the plane so it's not actually visible on the camera. So the next thing I want to do is I want to create my spray object. And for that, I'm going to add a plane. As you can see, and I'm going to rotate it just off of 90 degrees here so that it sort of sprays in one direction. So it's going to spray um, from right to left and in a sort of upwards trajectory. Okay, so that's my object. I'm going to place it roughly underneath my object and slightly um, underneath my plane. Uh, we'll tweak the angle of this in a minute. But now what I need to do is apply particle emitter to this object. So I'm going to change this to emitter. to see. So if I go back to my emitter, I'm going to go to uh, my particle system, click on new, and as you can see our particles get emitted <laughs> and they sort of dribble out in a very pathetic way. Okay, so what I want to do here is essentially I want to tell it um, how to emit these using a velocity. So the velocity which we're going to set here is basically going to fire them out at a certain speed. So if I go back and play now, you can see my particles get emitted and I can increase this speed to get a sense of that spray. Okay, I need to just change this so that the particles emit for the entire lifetime. Okay, so at the moment, this object is spraying from across the whole of its face, which is fine. But what I want to do is scale this object in the X so that we get a nice fine line of particles. Okay, so now we need to replace the default um, particles that are being emitted for... Um, the actual object. So we're going to go down to render. We're going to choose render as object. And we need to choose the object that we're instancing. So we've named our object spray. I'm going to choose that. So now it's going to select those objects, the spray object, and it's going to emit those. So now what we can do is scale this up. And we're also going to choose the scale randomness, which enables us to get um, a spray that um, uh, has different sized objects. So we want them to overlap slightly, something like this. Okay, so the next thing we need to do, sort out the rotation of these objects. And I can never remember which one it is on these. Actually, change that. The easiest way to do this is we're going to go and find our original object. We're going to tab into it and we're going to rotate it around the Z. 90 degrees. Okay, so here we go. Um, so now we have this spray effect here. And if we play it back, we can see the spray coming out here. What I want to do with this now is take my emitter. Rotate it slightly. Let's go back to the first frame. 
Um, I'm also going to rotate it slightly uh, in the Y axis, just so that the spray sort of comes out at a weird angle. And the reason I want to do this is I'm going to create two of these sprays. I'm going to create one. Um, That rotates on one side and then I can duplicate this object so I'm going to grab it move it into final position and I'm also going to grab um, I'm just going to duplicate it bring it over here and I'm going to rotate it might be easier if I just turn this off now you can see particle effect. So maybe both of these objects need to move them back a bit. Okay, so now it's a case of just adjusting this particle system so that um, we've got the velocity correct, we've got the scaling, and then we need to work out the rendering of these objects. Um, so we're basically going to go down into here and we're going to go to our velocity. So I'm just going to increase this velocity slightly. Rewind the animation let's just to see how that works. So now we've got this nice spray coming up here. Okay. So what we might want to do is just choose both of these and rotate them slightly. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to give it a texture. Uh, so we can go back to our particle, our spray object. We're going to create a new texture for it. And if I go to my shading. So we want this to basically have uh, a team texture. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to just go to our group. As I said before, you can get hold of the um, team shader. I'm just going to drag this one in here. Um, so this white effect should be good. If I come back out of the object mode. So basically what I want to do is turn down the shadows. So we've got a nice soft gray effect. Turn up the highlights so we've got some more. Actually I might turn the highlights. But what I want to do is increase the whiteness of this object. So now if I go to my animation rewind and press play and now we have a spray effect so there's some tweaks we can do with this one is we can go back to uh, our meta we can change things like um, as I said the velocity we can change things like the object rendering in terms of its random size so we can get a greater number of small and large effects. And as I said before, we can also change the way that this sprays out. Obviously that's too much. Just to refine the overall effect. And if we increase the velocity Obviously, get a much more intense effect. Okay, so there's a couple of other things that we want to do. Um, so, uh, first thing we need to do is turn off the emitter so that we don't actually see it in the final render. So, if we go into render, 
uh, with our emitter object selected, we need to turn off show emitter. That basically means that in the final render, that plane won't show up. And we need to do that for both objects. Just to make sure that the emitter's off. Okay. One other thing we want to do in the particles tab is um, at this point, all of our particles stay the same size as they're emitted. And what we want them to do is to sort of shrink a little bit um, so that um, over time they get smaller um, and the spray effect tends to fade. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to go to the bottom of the particle setting where it has textures and we're going to create a new texture. Just to the right of this texture um, there's a little box next to the cross. If we click on that it takes us into our texture tab over here. Um, we're going to basically change the type of texture from image or movie to blend. Now, essentially what this blend is going to do is, it's, as you can see on the screen already, it's sort of taking some previous settings ahead. Uh, it's going to use this color ramp here, this blend, uh, in order to change the particle size. Uh, so there's a couple of things we need to do first. One is we need to change the influence by default. Uh, this is set to general time and what we want to do is turn off general time and change this to size. The other thing we want to do is change the mapping from default to generated to strand particle. This means that it affects the individual particles themselves so this ramp has an effect upon particle size which we did under the influence. Okay, we're now going to go into the colors tab here I'm going to turn on color ramp. The color ramp enables us to actually change this blend um, and to affect how these particles work. So what we want for these particles is that they start off larger and that they shrink over time. And the way we're going to do that is on this color ramp, we're basically going to swap over the black and white positions. So we're going to move the black from here, move the white to the left, and the black all the way to the right. And you can see now we start off with larger particles and over time the particles shrink. You can use this color ramp to change this effect, the amount that they shrink. Um, and you can play around with that to get uh, different effects. 